basketball of the year if they want to beat the Dayton Flyers in UD Arena. The visitors in their red head to toe, all white for the Flyers. Tonight's opening tip off brought to you by Premier Health. We are underway and quickly onto the attack. The Hawks. Working the perimeter, high pace, little left-handed lay-in, and that one will drop for Kwachik. Nice move by Kwachik, a little reverse spin, shoots it with his left hand, puts it up off glass. Good start for St. Joe's on offense. This is a team that can score points. The question is, can they score in the face of this Dayton defense, which has turned off many a good offense? Scoring first is important for St. Joe's because even though we haven't played 60 seconds and we have a tie game, they are 0-5 this season when giving up the first score of the game. Oh, boy. That's a stat that they were very happy to uh, learn they got the opening tip. Yeah, they've dismissed that one, haven't they? Brown outside the arc. Pulls up short. Turn around. Fade away. That's short. And after fumbling a bit, Holmes covers and Shara jumps into the front court. Shot for three from the wing. That is perfect for Blakeney. Great to see Blakeney take those shots early in the possession. But the confidence he had stepping up and taking those shots, he has been in his career a great defender for Dayton. He adds that type of offense. It just gives Dayton another weapon in the offense that they need right now, especially with the injuries. Both teams can score in the 70s. We expect an up-tempo pace tonight. In the lane, Sharvishamps with the block. Kwachik, seven on the shot clock. Brown, Blakeney on him. Goes baseline, nice move in the finish. Nice athletic move. Brown was behind the backboard when he got his feet settled. He had to jump back in front of the backboard to make that shot. Athleticism there. Holmes, turnaround, won't go right side of the iron. Kamara in for the rebound, thought he got pushed a bit, no call. And back come the Hawks. Underneath, little uh, dipsy do, surrounded, and ultimately unable to keep the ball in his hands. Fleming, but it was last touch by the home team. We'll stay right here. Good start by St. Joe's. I mean, this is one of the most formidable places to play in the country, and St. Joe's has got a good start going. Flyers lead the all time series, decidedly so here at the University of Dayton Arena. Brown, little shuffle pass underneath and a block from behind. Holmes will take the dribble. Shot from the wing for three. It's off the back iron. It was a good look for Amsil. And you want Mustafa Amsil to be aggressive on the offensive end. He has that ability. Fleming with an open look takes advantage of the space. Now St. Joe's in a 1-3-1 full court trap. Just taking a little time off the clock. Forcing Dayton to have be very efficient on the offensive end because they don't have as much time on the shot clock. That time, Amziel forced a little bit, and the ball's out of bounds, though the officials say it was touched by St. Joseph's. So a break for Dayton? That is definitely a break because that pass was to nobody. It didn't need to be tipped to not be completed. Holmes on the inbound. Interesting, Ron Holmes taking the ball out of bounds. Usually you don't have your big man, your center, taking the ball out of bounds, especially with his athleticism. Usually have him around the rim. There's a testament to his passing ability. Cross-court pass, pump fake, yeah. underneath, and a two-handed slam. There's Mike showing his presence on the court. Unusual presence for a freshman to be calm, under control, make a little move, and wait for the defender to commit before he kicks it off to Holmes. Opportunity for consecutive baskets goes away. And back comes St. Joseph. Tough pass by Kamara right there. Expecting Duran Holmes to catch it in traffic like that. Really well done by Reynolds. Invited some contact from Charles Johns at the end. And finished. Well, Charles Johns had a good look for three. He doesn't pass those up too often. Holmes. Yeah, you've already lost. When Deron Holmes catches the ball four feet from the rim, it's over. I mean, Miles just head down the other end of the court. Yeah. It's in the paper. 
Brown on the right-handed dribble. Kwachik. Kotsper Kwachik. Long distance three. Count it. Wow. The Eric Reynolds showing what we talked about pregame. The young man who can fill it up is having a great year so far. Holmes, little turnaround won't go, and then Omsiel has the ball go off his palm and out of bounds, and will pause. 15-28 remaining in this opening half of the University against Alcorn State. So, first 2-0 A-10 start since 2019-2020 season. And they look to keep that going, making it three in a row, while St. Joseph's has played just one conference clash, and that was a five-point loss to St. Louis on Saturday while the Flyers were winning at Davidson. 2-0 is the most important part of that five-game winning streak. Obina with the foul. Educate Obina checks into the game. Threw a hip out a little bit. As Omsiel was trying to track along defensively along the baseline. A couple of changes for the Flyers. We'll get to momentarily. Kobe Brea is among them and on the ball now into the corner. Gets it back on the wing. Content to work the perimeter at the moment. The guy's in white. Pump fake on the entry pass and a nice right-handed blow to Kamara. As hard as it may seem to be, St. Joseph's lost to Monte Kamara. He's just standing there all by himself. Rotation didn't catch up and he had an easy little opportunity for a bucket and he made it. Yep, Duran Holmes again, defense, making changes, making things happen on the defensive end, created that turnover. Good ball in from Blakeney, just skipped away from Holmes, transition yep. opportunity for the visitors. Had a little too much mustard on it for Duran Holmes to be able to corral it above his head. For three, not this time. Pretty good look there for Fleming. You can see how aggressive St. Joe's is being on the offensive end. They are not, they're not looking to take time off the clock. They are looking to be aggressive, find the first open shot, and put it up. Blakeney's got an open look, head of the key, in and out. Now Brown. Uh, no shot clock issues coming in at either end of this game. <laughs> nope, I hope everybody's got their laces nice and tight because they're going to be going up and down. A little off balance, but fouled. Kamara gets some help. He's got four points already, as does Holmes. Blakeney, three. It's going to be interesting to see how Anthony Grant uses his short bench. I mean, this pace continues. Both these teams going up and down. That makes it hard for a team with a short bench like Dayton to be able to keep stay fresh in the game. you got to play more players on a routine basis, and that, that makes it harder. We're dealing with only seven, eight guys. Charjamps returns for the Dayton Flyers. Reynolds, Brown, Greer, Coleman. Kwachik comes back in. A couple of changes for St. Joseph. Reynolds, Brown, Greer, and Coleman on the floor. A little passive pressure. Uh, Charjans is content to backpedal into his own end of the floor. Greer on the bounce pass. Reynolds. Brown in front of the flyer bench. Goes baseline. Shot goes up. Won't go in, but Brown's there with the left-handed follow. Cameron Brown just said, I'm going to beat you myself. And he did it. Good ball movement. Got to um, knock it down. Nope. Inside 13 minutes to play here in the first half. Back and forth game it is thus far. Pretty high tempo. Neither nice team. Nice pass. Oh, yeah, it was a good pass. Kobe Brea, great defensive play to come down. That was a nice pass by Kwachik. He saw he was not going to have any chance. 
to put that ball up with Deron Holmes in his face. And Bucky just saw his man cutting, and Kobe Brea knocked that out of bounds. Good thing he did. It would have been an easy layup. Pump fake from Brown. Gets a little closer. Contact there. No foul called. Rebound. Put back up. Won't go. Tap is in. They are aggressive to that rim off at the offensive end. That has been the name of the St. Joe's first half game plan. Aggressive. They are going at the rim hard offensively, looking for shots, looking for shots early in the shot clock, and they're thinking about crashing the goal boards. We talked about that. They've got a rebound in this game. They're not a good rebounding team, but rebounding is mindset, and I think their mindset is to go get some points off the glass. Nice finish with the left for Amsil. Showing a flash of his talent. We know Mustafa Amzil has the ability to score in bunches in a lot of different ways. Dayton needs that. I mean, they, they become very one-dimensional at times with Deron Holmes. As great as he's been, Deron Holmes can't score all the points for these Flyers. Tough shot. Eleven thirty-five to play in the half. One-point game. Shooting 39 percent from the floor, St. Joseph's right at 50 percent. The Flyers. There's steps, and we have a timeout on the floor. 11:24 remaining in the opening half. Had a great start to this game. I mean, he is aggressive. He's out there three of seven. Already scored six points and been effective on the glass. Three offensive rebounds. I mean, he's played very well to start this game, and I think been an excellent catalyst for St. Joe's on the offensive end. Which, you know, we talked about this team can score, and you can see with Reynolds and Brown, these are two guys who, you know, if you split them up, they're difficult to guard, especially on different uh, different sides of the court. The trouble they've encountered is they give up, on average, just about the same number of points they score. That's a good interior play. But when you're trading hoops for a while, some games it catches up to you, and that's really been their frustration. Well, especially against Dayton. Dayton's defense is too good to say, okay, we can just trade hoops because eventually Dayton is going to shut you down. Their defense is too good to expect to be able to score consistently. Turnovers, big problem. Reynolds with the uncontested dunk. And the pull-up at the end of that. Uh, on the rim I Close a little bit about that close, you know, the official was thinking eh, Maybe probably not want to do that next time Eric Reynolds Dayton six of twelve from the field just one of four from three-point range Freya Very difficult shot Late in the shot clock, contested deep three. Kobe Brea showing his shooting talent. Not a good possession for Dayton, but hey, when you score, it worth it. it's worth it. Back to within two. Long distance three-point effort from Winborn won't fall. Passing through the halfway point of the opening half. Flyers looking to get this game on level terms. The short shot doesn't drop, but we have a whistle and a foul. That time, Christian Winborn was absolutely on an island. He's down trying to guard Tamani Kamara in the paint. There is zero chance that Christian Winborn is going to be able to guard Tamani Kamara. At 6'2", freshman guard against Tamani Kamara? I, I don't think so. Clearly a little mismatch and a, a switch-off problem by St. Joe's in the defensive end. Not that one. No free throws yet for St. Joseph, which is interesting as they rank among the nation's leaders in both free throws made and in attempts. I mean, they're shooting 26 or 22 free throws per game. So far, no fouls by date. I mean, that's Anthony Grant's got to be happy about that. You go through the first 10 plus minutes of the half and you have zero fouls. Means you're playing good, sound, fundamental basketball. So an opportunity to level the game goes awry, and just as quickly at the other end, it's Reynolds 
with the three. Well, that was a big time shot by Reynolds. Came off a screen and buried the shot. Did not have much time to shoot it. Now Dayton comes down and turns the ball over. Said there weren't any fouls for, against Dayton thus far. Yep, jinx them. Broadcaster <laughs> jinx. Uh, fans are asking for a little traveling music to go with Quachik on that on that play. Looked like he took an extra step. Official doesn't agree, but looks like he took a little bit of an extra step and could have been easily called for a travel there. But I, Dwight, I am I am impressed by St. Joe's and their aggressiveness on the offensive end. They did not come into this game being a shy, retiring Violet over here in the corner. They are coming out saying, look, I understand this is Dayton. I understand this is a tough place to play. I understand the Flyers are one of the best defensive teams in the country. I don't care. We're going at them. And St. Joe's is going at them. As a team, converting about two-thirds of their free throws, two for two that time. And it's a six-point advantage. Time for a good possession for Dayton. They got to move the ball around, get it to Ron Holmes down low, exactly, and make the shot. This time they did it in transition. Didn't have to worry about half court because they broke the press. And Anthony Grant quite animated on the bench about the lack of a foul call. Big block from Holmes. Runs the floor. Say no more. Last three possessions of Deron Holmes show. Makes a shot, blocks a shot, dunks the ball on fast break. That's a pretty good three-possession run. There's a shot up with some pressure defensively, and Holmes is the first one down the floor again. Here comes a little run by Dayton. What's St. Joe's going to do in the face of this? If Dayton gets on a run, they are tough. Eight minutes to go in the half. Plenty of time on the shot clock, just at ten. Pump fake. Cross court pass. Char jumps open for three. Bang. I want to think about a timeout if you're St. Joe's. We've seen Dayton go on runs and bury opponents in this gym. If you're St. Joe's, you might want to. I know it's going to be a TV timeout, but you want to think about taking one because if you don't score here, it can get a little ugly. Lay up underneath. Off the mark. Ray up for three. Tip won't go, but a foul is called. We're going to take a break. Seven minutes and 16 seconds. Can really make a run at you. When they're making shots, coupled with the defense and how they can really shut you down, it's tough. 7 0 run over a minute, 29 seconds. And that featured five of six shooting from the field. Dayton has the ball on the foul. Ten on the shot clock. Brea pull up for three. Long distance effort. Right side of the rim. That's what St. Joe's needed. A good defensive possession coming out of the timeout so they can settle down. Now they need to make a shot. Fleming gets into the lane. Loses the orange thing. He drove, realized that Deron Holmes between him and the rim, and said, "Okay, that's not going to work," and panicked a little bit. And that's how I got the turnover. Stepped on the end line, did Holmes. This time, Deron Holmes going baseline a little bit. I don't think he stepped on the baseline. I don't think he stepped on the baseline. I think that's a blown call by the official. I don't think Deron Holmes stepped on that baseline. Oh, boy. Big battle for the rebound, and then hard to the floor. With Fleming. Boy, tough shot there. Rebound here. And I'm sorry, that's a travel. And the right call there is not a jump ball to travel because Fleming had possession of the basketball. 
There was not a jump ball when he was going to the floor. You can't hold possession of the ball and fall to the floor. That, by definition, is traveling. Then when he hit the floor, there was a, the, the defender, the Dayton defender, touched the ball and made it a jump ball situation. Well, that's after he traveled. It should have been a travel. Not, not a good two-possession stretch by the officials. Kamara working his way through a lot of traffic got underneath the rim Kamara goes up looked like he got hit on the arm there too he was calling for it Duran Holmes was visibly upset with the official and the official put his whistle in his mouth like hey I'm about to call a tee and Duran Holmes did the right thing turned his back and walked away but everybody right now in the Dayton uniforms are frustrated with the officials. Five and a half remaining in the first 20 minutes. Shot is missed, tapped away, and possession goes to the Flyers. Tough shot there. Boy, I, I know St. Joe's wants to be aggressive, but you can take tough shots like that against Dayton. Eventually it's going to come back to bite you because you're killing yourself by limiting your possessions and not giving yourself an opportunity to limit Dayton's possessions. Dayton's defense is going to stop you when you have great possessions. When you have lousy ones, it makes it even harder to score. Kamara. Freya with some pressure. Inside, outside. Get him, RJ! Blakeney, left-handed dribble towards the free throw line. Two big steps and the layup. Boy, really poor defense by St. Joseph. Not taken away from Blakeney on the move. He was aggressive. He made an athletic play, but I mean, you just can't dribble around like, you know, no, with no help. I mean, his defender was on an island, and nobody came to help him in a red uniform. It has been a while. Scoring drought, nearly four minutes now for the Hawks. Coach Lang needs to tell Rashir Fleming to stop dribbling the basketball towards the rim on Duran Holmes. <laughs> Nothing positive has happened when that freshman has put the ball on the floor and tried to drive the ball. I mean, I'm not sure where he's going. He's not going to beat Duran Holmes off the dribble. He's not quick enough, and Holmes is too athletic. So move the basketball. Catch it, move it. Stop dribbling towards the rim. Every time he does, bad things happen for the St. Joe's. St. Joe's undefeated on Wednesday nights thus far this season. 1 0. Shot for three. RJ Blakeney. RJ Blakeney coming out offensively and making a mark tonight for Dayton, giving them that ancillary scoring they need. Tough shot again. From down six, the Flyers up by that same number. It's a 12-point swing and a shot for three. Nope, not this time. It's an open look for Kamara. Look, I get the aggressive style and game plan for St. Joe's, but be aggressive and get good shots. Don't take bad shots early in the shot clock. I mean, make them if you want to, but eventually that's going to come back to bite you because you're not going to be able to make as many as you're going to need to, st to stay up with Dayton when they put that good defense on you. Winborn with the three. Three and a half remaining in the opening 20. It's an opportunity from the left side. Won't drop. Reynolds quickly back to the Hawks. Dribbles into traffic. Pulls out. Throws it to Kwachik on the right wing. Brown gets into the lane, puts up a shot. It's off the mark. And fighting hard to bring it under control is Holmes. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Three minutes even. It just, it's a demonstration by the NCAA that they understand that Dayton is one of the best places for college basketball in the nation. And I'm glad to see that recognized every single year. It should never, ever, 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 ever be anywhere but date. Ever. Ever. Inside three minutes remaining here in the first half. 
one of eight. The conversion rate for St. Joe's. They got off to that high flying start, built a six point lead. Now find themselves down three. Something to keep an eye on. They are shooting just under 37% this season. If they've shot below 40% for the night, they are winless. Conversely, when they shoot above 40%, they're 6-1. and one. 10 on the shot clock. A little bump and grind into the lane. Shot soft touch for Blakeney. So Blakeney's had a very good first half offensively. And this, this young man is making plays consistently. We've seen him make plays every now and then like that offensively. We haven't seen him string it together like this and make a consistent mark on the offensive end. Chance to build their biggest lead of the game. Charjean, sentry pass, knocked away. Holmes can't control, and then Mongolian Mike's called for a foul in transition. Holmes comes over, has a quick word of encouragement. You know, this feels like an important last two minutes of this half for St. Joe's. You know, when you look at you get a feel of the game, which team is has the advantage, which team is on the upswing, which is on the down. St. Joe's had a tough last five, six, seven minutes. Feels like they need to have a good last two minutes of this half. Close the gap a little bit, because if they don't close this gap in the last two minutes, it almost feels like Dayton can put five, six, seven, eight points on the board, and it could be a double-digit game. That shot by St. Joe's, I think, was a big shot in the normal course of this game. Ninety seconds to play in the first half. Dayton up three. Double on Holmes. Good kick out. Omsil, long distance oh, three. Long distance. That doesn't do that shot justice. Super long distance. And Omsil just stood up and buried it. Got to be careful. He might get a foul here. He's leaning all over Quachik. Dayton turning it up a little bit on the defensive end, putting a little extra pressure on St. Joe's. Oh, my. Winborn goes in and gets turned away, all in the same movement. Holmes. Kamar with the finish. We have a whistle and a foul. One of the nation's leading free throw shooters is going to the line. Great block by Mike. Was able to manipulate his body in the air without getting contact. Deron Holmes with a smidge of traveling music down there. It's the Euro step. I, uh... I don't think they have the Euro step here, Dayton. <laughs> so, you know, I guess there was a there was a travel. You know, he got called for stepping out of bounds earlier, which was, I think, a bad call. You know, maybe the officials leaving it up a little bit though. And it dropped. Coming up at halftime, Curtis Jackson, Mary Lee Melendez will run down the day's news headlines and the latest weather on the one. Below there, normal shooting conversion rate and points scored heading near to halftime. Look how tough this is. Look how tough that is to move the basketball around. Kamara forces a bad shot. Instant dividends from Anthony Grant going to that 1-3-1. Forces a St. Joe's bad shot at the end of the half. That is a great, great little, like, change-up that Dayton has. They're, they're, our, their half-court man-to-man defense is as good as there is. When you can throw that quality 1-3-1 with Tamani Kamara in that position, it really makes Dayton tough on the defensive end to scout and go against consistently. Now, St. Joe's with their own press and this time a foul another look you can see he kind of gets banged when he tries to make the left-handed pass 
And then Kamara will go to the line. Fleming's mistake was to reach in with his hands. I mean, he's a freshman. And instead of getting in good position and looking to deflect the ball as it's thrown, he's trying to reach in and knock the ball out of Tamani Kamara's hands. That, that nine times out of ten, that leads to a foul. 20 seconds to go. They're not going to hold for one shot. It's just not in the DNA of St. Joseph's. They go to the basket, miss, put it back, miss again, and then lose possession out of bounds. Perhaps the Flyers will go for one final possession. Yeah, and that's just a bad call. I mean, I think, you know, for, for St. Joe's, they're down eight. You have the basketball. You can, you can guarantee yourself going into the locker room down less than ten. Now, with that quick shot, bad shot, now Dayton has a chance to put a double-digit game. Clock at five. Brea, Omsil underneath at the buzzer. And it won't fall. So Dayton walks off the court shooting fifth. Breakout, fast break opportunities. Deron Holmes, other good players making defensive plays down the stretch. For Dayton really led to that run and that 14-point switch. Now the question is, can St. Joe's capture some of their early first-half magic? Be aggressive on the offensive end, but aggressive towards good shots, not bad ones. Quachick, Winborn, Reynolds, Brown, and Fleming on the floor for St. Joseph as their first shot of the second half won't go. Kamara Holmes, Amsil, Blakeney, and Charjamps for the Dayton Flyers. Good start by Dayton. Good ball movement. Mustafa Amsil. Down low, able to post his man up with his size. And Dayton able to find him for an easy bucket, make it a 10-point game. Great start for the Flyers. 10 is the largest lead the Flyers have enjoyed on this night. Brown just forcing his way in underneath, but can't get the shot to go. Offensive rebound. Reynolds, little pull up on the right side, in and out, swatted away, kept alive. And Reynolds missed that shot because Deron Holmes is waiting for him. That's what Deron Holmes does. No, no, nothing in the box score for Deron Holmes causing that shot to be missed, but he absolutely caused that shot to be missed. And Holmes rebounds the errant effort. Early going here of half number two, Dayton up ten. And we've got a whistle. And a foul. Every time I see Mike play, he gets a little bit better. I mean, I just love the way this kid moves on the court. He moves with confidence. Good distribution of scoring on the Dayton side. And then Eric Reynolds, you talked about him at the top. And he is proving to be as billed. Mike with like a foot and a half advantage <laughs> right now over his man. Unable to put it down, though. But that was the right idea. I mean, you're 6'8". And you got a guy who's 6-1 on you. You got to back that in and get a good shot. Next time, you got to take it towards the rim. Make him foul you. He'll learn that with time. Important possession for St. Joe's. They have got nothing going in the first, in the second half offensively. Needed them to, they needed to roll that one in. Gain a little momentum. And Winborn gets the kind iron. Flyers into the front court. Baseline, reverse, in and out. And Blakeney went down hard and was fouled on the shot attempt. Boy, somebody gave R.J. Blakeney some, like, protein powder in his cornflakes this morning because he is going to the rim hard. I mean, he came out into this game saying he wanted to make a, a mark offensively. You can see how aggressive he has been about trying to score the basketball. I mean, he's he's always been a very, you know, a good offensive player in spurts, but a really good defensive player, just a solid player all around. He's never been a guy who just takes the ball over and over again and tries to make shots and make points. That's what we've seen him do in the first 23 minutes of this game, really be aggressive on the offensive end, and I like it. He's showing good athleticism. He's showing a good shot. He's showing the ability to create opportunities for himself at the rim. That makes Dayton a tough team to guard if you get a Blakeney thinking like that consistently.
Kwachik. Spins free and then gets tapped from behind as the shot. Omsil out quickly. Blakeney is the target. The pass is deflected away. Three on one opportunity there. Right idea by Tamani Kamara. Just didn't get it up in the air high enough to keep it away from the St. Joe's defender. Here's good move by Kwachik. Time to get around Omzio, but Omzio with his long arms and sides was able to block that shot from behind and then instigate the fast break with a nice outlet pass. Winborn exits for the Hawks. Blakeney and the double team splits it. Inside, back out to Charjamps. That one's not going to drop, but the ball ricochets to Holmes. Backs in, turnaround, still floater. Yeah, once he gets there, it's over. A tough job by St. Joseph to rip crazy. And of course, Mike Shar jumps. Toting an entire country along. Yeah, you don't see Mongolia listed on many of those lists around college basketball. St. Joseph trying to get back into a game. They led at one point by six. Good defense by the Flyers late in the shot clock. Got to hustle one up. Shot won't go. Rebound Kamara. There's the Dayton defense. Forcing a terrible shot by St. Joe's. That's what happens when you play defense. They wear you down. Omseal starts baseline on the dribble. Pulls up. Falls to the floor, fight for the ball, stays with Dayton. Another double team, and this time it's a turnover by the Flyers. Brown somehow weaved his way through that pressure. Kwachik, nope. They just can't get the three pointers to go. They are four of 15 on the evening. St. Joe's from beyond the head for the Flyers. Then it's off to Fordham, back for VCU, and a quick rematch with Davidson before consecutive road games. Boy, close to five seconds there by St. Joe's. Dayton with good pressure defensively on the inbounds pass, almost created a turnover. Educa Obina underneath. And a great pass by Reynolds that time. Got to Obina down low. All he had to do was jump up and drop it over the rim. The Reynolds pass keyed that. Down nine. Largest lead now for the Flyers, 11. St. Joe's trying to keep touch. But when you get a shot like that from Tamani Kamara, it makes it a little bit tough. We've seen him make those shots. All throughout his career. He hasn't taken as many this year, I think, as he's done previous years. But he has the ability to make those shots consistently. And that really gives Dayton a great weapon on the perimeter that they need. Nice play by Omzeel. Get that steal. Nice pass behind the back. Nice pass down low. That's teamwork right there. So Dayton explodes. And builds, comparatively speaking, a huge lead. The Hawks need to get hot. They're well below their scoring average. And they're going to need to get much closer to it if they're going to get into this game. Miss on that end. Opportunity on the other. Holmes. Double team to the floor. Foul is called. You've just seen Dayton take it to another gear. It's just this Dayton defense has been tremendous. And Omzeal right there with a nice play around the back. And a good heads up play by Kamara, realizing that Deron Holmes was there all by himself. That just shows you. I mean, those are the three biggest guys on the court for Dayton. They're showing you they're they're Ball handling skills, their passing skills, their defensive skills. That's why Dayton, you know, their their talent across the front line is just tremendous. Those three guys are very versatile for big guys. Holmes leads with 14 points, but Blakeney has 11 and Kamara 10. 
Reynolds continues to lead the way for the Hawks on 12 points. Five on the shot clock. Spin move in the lane. That one won't go, but there's a foul. And it'll go against Kotsper Kwachik. And you can see St. Joe's right now just kind of on their heels. You know, they're getting it at both ends right now. They're getting Dayton down on the defensive end, just stepping up their defense to a level that I don't think St. Joe's saw in the first half. It's been another level for Dayton defensively. And on the offensive end, just a physical brand of basketball. But you got Kamara, and you got Amzil, and you got Deron Holmes, and Blakeney, too. Those guys just physically taking the ball to the rim, posting up, being tough. That wears on you as a basketball player. That just wears on you because you have no break and you need you need a break to get mentally and physically come back from that. And right now, St. Joe's looking like a team that needs to kind of sit down for like 20 minutes and gather themselves. They don't have that kind of time, do they? 13.30 remaining. Shot from distance by Brown won't go and they just can't find the range. Well, they're not running any offense right now. It's kind of like, you know, desperation. Everybody's trying to shoot a 17-point shot. That was a tough shot deep. And but for the rebound, you know, this would be going down the other end of the court. So, I mean, St. Joe's has got to go back to their, their offense and stop trying to say, okay, we're just going to shoot one-on-one. -on -one. We're, go we're good athletes, and we got we, we shoot the basketball. Great. Not against Dayton. you got to move the ball around. You gotta be, it's got to be a five-person effort to score against Dayton. Winborne on the dribble. Watch it. Against Amsil. Goes in the lane. Good finish. St. Joe's got to string together some of those to get back in this game. Starts down here in the defensive end. They've got to figure out a way to match Dave's aggressiveness. And RJ Blakey just showing what he's decided to do today, which is to make a mark offensively. Inside 13 minutes remaining. Dayton has hit four consecutive from the floor. Largest lead has ballooned 17. And Blakeney came in averaging 7.6 a game. Has 14 already. We're not even to the 12-minute mark. Almost doubling his per-game scoring average. Yeah, Blake needs five of six from the field. That includes three of four from three-point range. You almost wonder if the coaching staff, you know, has said to him, hey, look, we want you more aggressive offensively. Usually guys who average 7.6 a game don't come out and just kind of, you know, go at it offensively and just kind of be one of the major focuses on the offense. But Blakeney has been a major focus of the Dayton offense so far. Tough shot. Good defense by Blakeney. Give Brown a lot of credit for shooting that ball over top of the outstretched arm of Ben Blakeney. It was good defense, and Brown just made the shot. Brea and Amseal. Kamara won't go. Holmes after the ball. Gets the rebound, and then gets fouled as he turns on the baseline. The clock will pause. 11.46 to go. In regulation for during games, but it really affects you in practice. And practice is where teams get better. Practice is where you, you, you build towards that March run that you want to be on. Without good practices, you're not going to be a good team in the end. And I think, you know, that's been that's been what I think has been impressive for this Dayton team. They've pivoted during games to become a pretty darn good team and, and have people step up and be doing it without really a lot of practice time. Ball slipped out of Blakeney's hands. And that was a transition opportunity for St. Joseph's. Didn't quite pan out, but the possession isn't over yet. And there's a block in the end that was irrelevant. And right now, St. Joseph's has to use every opportunity they can find to get points. Brown, this is a, these are important free throws. It doesn't seem like they'd be important down 14, but St. Joseph's on the verge of getting blown out here. They have got to make a run now. That they're going to get back in this game. See if they can refine that energy with which they started the game. I mean, the Hawks came out flying. And that energy, you can see. 
this team looks a little tired right now. And again, that's what Dayton does to you. They just grind you. On defensive end, they grind you down on offense. And then on, on when Dayton comes on offense, you got big guy after big guy after big guy coming at you down low with athleticism and jumping ability. It's tough mentally and physically on teams. And St. Joe's, I think, is starting to wear down. Real pressure from St. Joseph's, but the Flyers are able to break it and then punish Brea. That is how you break a full court 1-3-1 one, one trap. That is how you do it. You bring it down the court, you wait until somebody makes a mistake, you kick it into the corner, and you drill the three. Great technical ability by the Dayton Flyers to recognize the press and break it. And now you see what happens when you try and take it inside against these athletic big guys from Dayton, they're all over the basketball defensively. They are keyed to knock the ball around if you don't take it up in the right spot. Trouble getting it in again. Winborn working against Charjamps goes all the way to the basket, puts this tough shot up, and it goes. Nice shot by Winborn, a freshman. Going against 6'8 Mike. You mentioned the freshmen. They are one of the youngest teams in the country, something that the Dayton Flyers know from just a season ago. Cross court pass, not a good one. It's stolen. Transition opportunity. Shot won't go. Foul. I'll tell you, that's an underrated good play by Wakeji. I mean, you get that up down, you know, that turnover happens. You know, you, it's easy for, for 12, okay, just to lay back and say, okay, I'm going to let him get the, the layup. The right play is to go down and challenge that, even if you get the foul. Make him shoot the two free throws rather than have an easy layup. And now he's got to go up. He's got to earn those two points. It's a great play by Wilkage. who comes off the bench. He's got fouls to give, and he gives one right there for the chance that maybe they'll get one or zero points. Now maybe one point instead of the easy two. It's a hustle play. It's a good hustle play. Good teams do that type of stuff. Following up on that prior point, one fifth year, one senior. The rest are all underclassmen for St. Joe's. In terms of experience, Ken Palm ranks them 246 in the country. And that time, you know, St. Joe's made their free throws. That doesn't change the fact it was a great play by Wilkeji, a good hustle play. Because you do that 10 times, Five, six times you're going to find that they're going to score less than two points and your effort's going to be paid off. They've managed to close the gap a little bit, have the Hawks. Three on the shot clock. Reverse won't go, and the rebound swatted away. Brown tries to penetrate, goes back to Kwachik, and his three-pointer comes right back to him to the right side for three in and out. Well, what a great opportunity for St. Joe's. Two open threes to get it down to eight points. Dayton has to feel a little lucky there. They're coming away with still an 11-point lead. St. Joe's had it in their grasp to get this thing under double digits and really give them a little boost. Shot clock inside at 10. Char jumps for three. Well, count that. But he's he is a future excellent player for this Dayton team. Approaching the nine minute mark. Half number two. I think Joseph's came out strong. A lot of energy. Running the court. Built a six point lead. From way outside, that three pointer doesn't go. And then. Foul on Amseal. A bad shot by Brown. A little desperation shot there. St. Joe's lucky that Amseal, instead of boxing out, was doing a little uh, undercutting there, which is a foul. Can't waste possessions like that at St. Joe's. Bad shot time is over. They, they have no margin for error. They've got to make good shots, take and make good shots on nearly every possession. They want to get in this game. 
Good pass. Nice shot. There you go. That's good basketball right there. Watch Greer make a nice little pass. Bounce pass. Good catch. And taking it up. Obina will go to the free throw line. Obina had to change that shot a little bit. Going up to get the opportunity for the three-point play. That was, that was a nice give and go by St. Joe's. Love those basketball players. They're basic, but they are beautiful to see. Nice smooth free throw by the big guy, too. And you take a look at the scoreboard. They're hanging around, St. Joseph. It's always dangerous with a team that has the ability to make threes. And this St. This Joe's team can make threes. It's just a matter of can they physically and mentally hold up against a, a relentless Dayton defense that just wears you down. Inside 10 on the shot clock for three in front of the bench. Nope. Blakeney comes flying in. And jump ball is called. Possession arrow points the direction of Dayton. If ever St. Joe's needed a possession arrow in their favor, it's on that possession. I mean, Dayton, they were playing good defense against Dayton, forced a long, late shot by Kobe Brea from the corner. Just weren't able to get the rebound and force the jump ball. Now they got to go play defense again. Nice play by Brown. Still not able to get the ball back by St. Joe's. It would be, it would be tough if Dayton makes a shot here. How about that? Oh, one? boy. Again, Blakeney showing the, the aggressive offensive style he came into this game to display. Boy, you got to feel a little bit for St. Joe's. Great two possessions on defense. They played tough defense the whole time. Balls flopping around, had a chance to get it, weren't able to bury it, get the ball, and, and seal the possession. Score by Dayton, and now empty possession by St. Joe's. Yeah, they had the opportunity that you pointed out, down 11, and a couple of good looks couldn't get it to go, but they just haven't found their three-point shooting rhythm here tonight. St. Joe's just not able to make a shot when they really, really need one. As the nice. shot clock is set to expire, Holmes with the conversion. Well, that really is. Holmes' ability to make that step back. Nobody's going to block that shot. It's all on him for him to step back and shoot that ball with such easy touch. That really makes it very difficult to guard him in the post when he has that ability to make those step back shots. And now the lead grows a little bit again. Uh oh. <laughs> it's a good block. <laughs> I mean, you knew that was coming. And it'll be flyer ball when we come back. Six minutes, 32 seconds. Wood, even though you're not really trying to do anything differently, this Blakeney just seems like he's doing something differently tonight. And he's he's come out with this aggressive offensive, you know, mojo about him. Like we really haven't seen that as earlier in the season. That's kind of a new development for him, and you wonder you know, whether we can still see, we can see that more and more because I think it's been a good development for Dayton. 13 of 16 shooting combined those two, and for good measure, Holmes adds in nine rebounds. Goes up with the right hand. That's too strong. Kept alive for the Flyers. Shot for three. Yes! Blake D. Confidence. He went up with that shot with confidence, too. You could see the way he carried himself. He was happy to get the ball late in the shot clock, and he went up knowing he was going to make it. Brown, right side of the lane, creates a little space oh, oh, oh. and gets the run around. Degree of difficulty, 9.7. Except the Russian judge. <laughs> Right down the middle. This will tire St. Joe's team because that was way too easy. Yeah, Greer wasn't interested in getting in the way of that train. And it was just, you can see this team has been ground down. The St. Joe's team mentally, physically, 
you can see that you know with that type of a play they're just I think they're just kind of losing the concentration well, down 11 they had a couple of really good possessions and just couldn't get the shots to drop turn around nice little touch there on the finish for Brown and you talked about that quite I mean when you when you're down 11 and you give you give a team two good possessions to get it but you can't score that's frustrating and it, and it wear and it makes you mentally it makes you waver tough teams fight through that but a lot of tough teams they waver and they kind of like oh kind of boy nothing we're going to do tonight's going to get us under that 11 point mark and that little gap in their effort that little doubt Let's the game get to 16, 18, 20. And R.J. Blakeney just going to the rim hard. Second miss from the free throw line. And misses both. Oh, nice block. Everything's coming with great difficulty for St. Joseph's, and you got to credit Dayton's defense for much of that. Brown now leads St. Joseph in scoring with 13 points. Sort of watch the the battle in the lane, and you just feel for Quadric down there. I mean, you know, he got the, the call eventually, but he was trying to figure out a way how to shoot that yes. without getting it blocked, yes. and he just couldn't figure it out. And eventually, just went up and got the foul call. You know, he might have been bailed out a bit by the official there because I'm not sure how much of a foul that was. But you just see him mentally going, "Oh my God, <laughs> how am I going to shoot it over Duran Holmes?" I mean, that's just how do you do that? And he couldn't figure it out, but eventually drew the foul. Free throw shooting. That's the first miss of the evening for the team. That makes the crowd a little grouchy. No Lee's chicken tonight. At least no three Lee's chicken tonight. <laughs> Nearing the four-minute mark. Comfortably in control, Dayton. Lob underneath. Yep. Too easy. Too easy. Too many gut punches. This St. Joe's team has taken too many gut punches by Dayton. That's And that's, you know, in a boxing analogy, that's what Dayton is. They're gut punchers. They just go out. They just pound. They work the gut until at the end of the game you're like, all right, I'm done. Um, seal for three. It's off the right side. And the ball hits the baseline. Last touch, they say, by Blakeney. So possession goes. That is the new normal. Don't, don't focus on the number. Focus on the to overall name. The Dayton about to go 3-0 and in the Atlantic 10. That's can't get any better than that. That's the start you want. If you're Anthony Grant, come out. Take care of business at home. Go 3-0. and and get on the road and get things done. Excuse me. And an open weekend ahead. Yep. More recovery time. And the word is for the injured players that they continue to progress. So it's on the plus side. It's just time. Ten on the shot clock. Quachik doing a lot of the work. And it pays off in the form of a foul. Well, that time Quachik said, okay, I'm not going, I'm not taking you back in the post. I'm going to dribble you around out here and see if Deron Holmes had the opportunity to stop him in his neck of the woods and set him underneath the, the rim, and it worked. Stick to it of this.
gets the free throw to go. Dayton defensively has held St. Joseph's to 32.8% shooting from the floor tonight. And they have been good from the free throw line. Ten and eleven is the team. Now St. Joe's up in that press, trying to force some errors by Dayton. So they could try and get some extra possessions. That time though, a push. Like by Quadric. And Deron Holmes is going to put him at the free throw line. Now Deron Holmes. 18 points on 8 of 11 shooting, hit both his free throws. He's got 10 rebounds. And following in the footsteps of a very famous flyer, Obi Toppin, both were A-10 Rookie of the Year. Toppin went on in year two to be A-10 Player of the Year. Holmes the early favorite for that. And Toppin and Holmes both lead the nation in dunks. Well, Toppin did, and now Duran does. Yeah, ho hum, another double double by Duran Holmes. <laughs> he shot 10 to 13, and Davidson had 32 points. They currently ranked 54th in the Kempon ratings. They're trying to get themselves in a better position nationally after that rugged start. Greer. Good solid positional defense by Dayton. Even in the last three minutes of the game, it's highly likely the Flyers are going to win. They're still being what they are, and that is a good, solid defensive team where they're supposed to be in the right position, taking charges. Again, another good sign of a team, a disciplined, hard-working team that we know the Flyers are. Mike out there getting pressured, being forced to show a little dribbling skills, and he does. <laughs> Working the clock. 2.20 to go. Six on the shot clock. Holmes working. Won't go. Tom Seal with the follow. Watch it with the long three-point attempt. Gets his own rebound. Greer bounce pass to the left wing. Shot is up, won't go. Holmes clears. I think if you're Anthony Grant right now, you're thinking, okay, let's just end the game well. No sloppiness. And most importantly, no injuries. Play solid. Let's not undo the things that Dayton has done so well in this game. Let's play good, solid, fundamental basketball. But nobody get hurt. Once again, shot clock ticks into single digits. Uh-oh. Wide open look for three. Not this time. Four of six now from long distance. That one's from either farther out. Won't go. Tap to Holmes. Trap. Fights his way out of it. Amsil will sit on the ball. Looks for Char Jumps. Instead goes the opposite direction to Blakeney. And Dayton calls timeout. Ewell will check in for Dayton. The KG also comes in to take out tomorrow. 19 on the shot clock, 46 on the game clock. Yep. Nice vision. Great court vision. Nice pass. Mike is, I mean, it's smooth. That was very smooth. Yeah, Char Jumps like that one. Normally stoic. He had a big grin on his face. Yule yeah. picks himself up off the floor. Yeah, that was 
just a smooth, smooth play by Mike. To first get the ball to that position where he could make the, the lob. Then to make that easy pass to Amzil, who caught it effectively and dunked it. That's, again, Mike, impressive young freshman out there playing in a situation where I don't think anybody envisioned him playing the minutes at this position at this point in the season. He's done it very, very well. Now, look, it hasn't been perfect. No. Has he had, has there been, you know, games where he's had to learn and he's had more negative plays than positive? Yes. But the, the basic skills, the knowledge, the ease of how he plays the game comes out very effectively. 15 seconds to go. Blakeney content just to stand out near midcourt. Passive defending. Bleach more. The clock's going to expire. And the Flyers are going to go to 3-0 in the Atlantic 10. 